Jones. Fantastis. Romantis. We're notifying viewers that you all are fantastic. Thank you for notifying. The violence now need to take you back home to connect and for some people to join us. Uh, today is Friday. Yo, Friday already. What a day. What a day, what a day, what a week, what a, what a couple of days, and yeah, it just keeps getting better. Um, Gaiches, Tawades, Kaeza, it is an amazing privilege to be able to greet you. We give thanks and praise to our Creator for the gift of life, love, and peace that we experience in this life and all the lives to come. Do not disturb, unset. Yeah, let's do that. Do not disturb. Don't blow me. Okay. Uh, if this is the first time that you are here or you see my face or hearing my voice, I hope that you are experiencing kindness and love and that you might consider sticking around and connecting with me on uh, this wonderful Friday afternoon right here from sunny South Africa. I'm Chief Etienne Davids. I'm a husband, a dad, a creative entrepreneur, a community leader, a human being, somebody that fails, somebody that loves music, an artist, an expressor, you know, all sorts of things that I decide I want to be. And I want to impact the world positively through connection, creation, and conversations. And at the moment, one of the big, big conversations that we are having in order to increase kindness and reduce suffering has to do with a group of incredible human beings that have been classified as colored. And I would love to continue that conversation, but instead of it just being me all the time, I want to give you an opportunity to just speak your mind, uh, feel free to share it if you want to connect with others, but I want you to speak your mind. Give me your thoughts. Let's let's have a open conversation. It's like a weekend. We can chat about it. You can ask me stuff if you want. I'll see if I don't mind answering some questions. You know, I mean, that's all point of privacy still. But I figured, you know, it would be. We've been through a lot this week, and uh, it's. I'm sure there's still going to be so much more coming. Um, even in your own life, you're like, yeah, we've been through a lot this week, but because I don't have a it's it's only Friday. We still have. So I understand that, and I think that the reason why we are here now, and why you are even watching or hearing my voice, or why we have this moment together, is because we decided it before, and we're supposed to be here. Whatever it is that you have to share, or whatever it is that you are here to learn, or whatever it is I can learn from you. That is exactly why we're here, and we're going to give respect that time and respect your time because your time is precious. And I appreciate, love the fact that you choose to spend your time and your attention that everybody else is fighting and vying for here. And I'm hoping that it will be something. No, I don't hope. I believe it to be true that your time spent here will be valuable and it will be used in a way so that we can continue to increase kindness and we're just gonna have a nice conversation some of the live conversations that i've had this week have been around some interesting books uh, resources that i found on archive.org a book that i was gifted um, from an author named dr rubin who talks about the identity of and the heritage of colored people because that's part of the conversation element that i really want to navigate so that we can get to the truth um, we also had t uh, an interview with the representative from the Clakey's Kral community, which, if you didn't get to watch that, look, I'm not trying to plug stuff and be like, yeah, yeah, this is like another bit of... Uh, really, go do you... It's long, I know. And it's in Afrikaans, if you don't understand Afrikaans. Um, I Google um, that, that translate this in, this Afrikaans into uh, English. I can put subtitles in for you. But it, it's, it's a really powerful conversation. It had so much valuable information, especially around the stuff that we've been talking about, um, referencing Queen Valerie and um, the outcome of that court case and what that means for like the collapse of the corporation and, and really what this is meaning for the classified colored community, Aboriginal people, 
and how we are never getting this conversation about something that I feel like I've got such an interesting perspective. Well, yeah, it's, it's interesting to me. Okay, I think it's pretty interesting for me. But uh, this idea around why it is the way it is now, why people are our own people. And I'm including all of our African brothers and sisters. I mean, at the rate that we are now talking about, and, and even if you read it in the context of the military and military industrial complex, these imperialist profiteering bent on keeping us dumb because they, oh, anyway, we'll get to that another, but, but, but they keep talking about this whole like invasion of foreigners and oh, it's the far, oh, you got to protect your jobs and you got to do this yeah, foreigners. And I'm like, okay, it's quite interesting. To, to hear this story about foreigners when none of the people on the continent that are indigenous or aboriginal are foreign. And then it got me thinking about this whole idea of the separation of, of, of people and dividing people and classifying people. And um, I mean, it's not like I know all the answers. Like I said, it's just my opinion. This is just like my thinking. Uh, and, I, uh, and I really, for today, for some reason, I don't know if it's got something to do with the... Uh, uh, eclipse that's coming, both of them, or, or what it is, I don't know, but 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 I feel like sharing with you guys a lot of things that are more personal, so right now it's like vulnerable, just come climb into my head and let's have that conversation together, but I have this idea that if we look at the way that society has been structured and the way it's been put together, everything is made and bent on this comp competitive or comparative principle like you you can't you can't even go to if you think about school and and if you're a parent and if even if, if you're a first-time parent like me too and and it was kind of that would but if you think about something like that you reflect on what your experience was and then what it meant to you and then what you learned from that over the time or over the years and then what you believe it should be or what you know to be true it should be. And if we look at something like school, you're supposed to go and learn stuff there, like things that are going to be helpful, that are going to help you navigate this ridiculous thing called life, you know, and, and help you manage this avatar that we're all in. But what it actually does is it teaches us consumption, consumerism, separation, it, it, competitiveness, and, and please don't get me wrong, respect to every teacher and every educator and every principal where there is from a point of righteousness and in search of r the truth, not withstanding how I feel about it. I mean, if again, I'll reflect or reference the fact that if you if the sky was orange and I said, no, it's blue, I'm not trying to be con uh, uh, confrontational here. I'm just saying that I'm prepared to go to a place where I'm like, okay, I believe my entire life that it was orange, and then now I'm getting evidence that it's actually blue. If we look at schools, we're made to be consumers. I mean, the result from it has been competition, and, 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 and that brings me to my whole idea of this division thing. So, so we see like little pictures of this and evidence of this, but specifically in melanated communities, indigenous communities, communities and i know that it's going to be maybe a difficult conversation to have here when we are talking now about because it's like, oh here's another one of those people that's trying to be you see you, how racist colored people are they're just talking I, i'm just sharing some of what i know and from some of the things that i've read and i'm sure you've also read and some of the research and all the other stuff that we all know and then we formulate an opinion and then we share it with within our peer group and then we discuss it so you can not point out ha 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 keku stupid does di do and so we can say hey listen um there's this flaw in your argument or there's this piece of evidence that kind of isn't really evidence or there's actually been something that's disproved this not in a competitive i'm better than you and you're stupid in this but more in a we as a human race need to progress forward and that person, whether I think that they're an idiot or not because of their opinion, because they lack information or, oh, they didn't know the right research or, are oh, you talking about other stuff. Instead of thinking of that person as a com com person I'm competing with for consumption and even competing indirectly, I could rather be like, that is a potential parent to a future generation. So it's my duty as a concerned individual 
a participating member in society, somebody that says that I care about what is just and what is right and, you know, moral compass and all the good things that a lot of people are using as a means to just get away with the shitty things that they do so that they can say sorry afterwards. And I mean, I'm included. I'm no different because I'm just as much a human and I've also got a past and not, nobody knows what they're doing here. Well, not nobody, but, you know, people that are do, saying that they have it all figured out are winging it and then just basing that opinion of I know what I'm doing on the fact that they've just been getting a, a consistent result that's been positive for them for now. So when I think about this whole like, yeah, okay, maybe this competition thing about like the school and I shouldn't be thinking of like, oh, that, that's the kind of departure point I want to, 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 to use. So that it can mean that when I'm sharing my opinion on why the separation thing and why specifically in the Aboriginal or the, the melanated community it exists and why I even see the images of the, or the remnants of it, you're not going to just be dismissive. And I know you that are listening, that's watching this, that's busy, like just like, okay, let me just find out what, uh, what is the man going to tell me today? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. And, and I really just want to respect your time and just share my opinion. And then if you want to have a conversation about it, cool. We're also open to having this conversation about whatever it is that you want. But I'm just going to take a few minutes and then share my, my thinking around why it is that we are still experiencing the, the rate of oppression around the world, especially amongst indigenous people or melanated people. And it brings me to this idea of like, everybody knows the story of like, once upon a time, there was a bunch of cave people. <laughs> and these cave people were the only ones that were ever there. But from them, and this is why I'm laughing. Please don't mis misinterpret my laughing. I'm like, this is, this is like the same thing as like saying everybody in the whole world accepts that the sky is blue and that we can say that the sky is blue. And I'm not somebody that's coming out and saying, yeah, but the sky is orange. I'm just like, that's the, the point, right? So all human beings, every single, like Mark Lottering said, if you cut me, I bleed buckets. Every human soul carrier stems from these first Home, human, human beings, right? Scientific empirical evidence. And that was here in Africa. Okay, so if we consider where the cradle of mankind is, and if you're in South Africa, it's like, yeah, I can type in my GPS now. and I can go find So now we're considering, okay, if this is where the first human beings were, and the first time that you move into your town or the first time you move into a new province or the first time you move into a new building or the first time you move into a new school, you know, you kind of have your reserve because you got to check things out a little bit. You get where it's comfortable. Then you move a little bit more as you explore and you become more courageous and you're more brave and you start seeing, hey, wait, there's more possibility. So even if it is that we are going with the, yeah, you are claiming that you are these cave people that drew on this stuff and whatever, you have to eliminate that argument of non-intelligence because it would take intelligence to progress and learn through faulting and yes maybe it happened over uh, uh what do they say like hundreds and millions of years and over time was relevant but let's say a uh, hundred million and yes there were some that died yeah of course not everybody knew when the lion went Rawr! let's not run to that thing i got those up for you and somebody was like wow i like and when they ate him they're like all right those things they eat us so there was intelligence when life began for the human race now we're thinking about it in africa from africa and we fast forward a hell of a lot because i don't want to have uh, too much of that conversation but let's fast forward to the part where everybody's now currently having this like fist fight. And I would like to ask you to please be respectful and kind in whatever confrontation or uh, uh, interaction or discussion you have online, offline, and with your family, with other people, regardless of what you know to be true or what you are trying to share, what your intention is, because you need to understand that your journey is your journey. It's your journey. You, you, everything starts with inner standing. Ask you, who am I? Okay. Nobody's going to ask that for you. And if they ask you and you don't know, somebody's going to tell you. What's that quote? If you don't know who you are, and the, if the world asks you who you are and you don't know who, who, and you don't know, they will tell you. So now you have to start with, okay, now my VS, what is my character? What kind of, uh, you know, dress up the avatar? Whatever. Oh, I got the. But if you don't start there, you're going to get caught in this 
what people tell you you are. So now let's say everybody comes from Africa and we are expecting this this heated debate now in the fact of like identity and, and what's the difference between your history and your past and yeah, but you, you don't look like this and you don't sound like this and you don't do this and yeah, but where's your evidence for this and let me go and use this article and yay, but you people have this all coming down to this again, competition, kind of like conflict, better than, worse than kind of argument and then I think about, okay, so if we are all in agreement in Africa, despite the origin story that all of us are brothers and sisters, all human beings, all of us, all hues of beings. Um, we are we are soul carriers that are of the earth, of this soil. This is our mother, planet, birth, us, creation, life, everything here. And and we have now gotten to the point where colonization was taking place. And I saw this really interesting video where somebody was saying maybe. If you had an opportunity as a, a black man that was a stock, talk standing in front of all of the white people and you wanted to say something, what is it that you would say? And, and like, I think the anticipation was like, oh, please stop being racist. But it was like, you know, maybe what you need to realize is that you need to civilize yourself, that the uncivilized, and I'm not making this a black and white. I'm just trying to help you get to the point of overstanding. So if you can civilize yourself instead of looking for where the fault was that you had, wherever it is that you were from, and then coming to somewhere else and then telling other people that, hey, wait a second, that everything that you have here, it's kind of okay, but only with these conditions and these things. But you come from a place that is uh, not very uh, prosperous and not very healthy. And of course, it was sadness and not the best of the people that was being said like, oh hey listen we're gonna go and explore the unknown world where there is absolutely no idea of what might be waiting for us let's send our best and brightest nope they were like all right who is in the jails now and who can we sacrifice for the sakes of information and for the rest of us i think let's take that one over there that's in the jail cells, that one over there that has some sort of a disability and that can't really function in society. And that's in any case a problem here for the rest of us civilized folks in this civilized state. But we have to go and explore other places. We, anyway, so so let's go and have a look and see. Let's say put those peoples with at least maybe like a couple of legit ones on the thing and go and explore. Nobody said, yeah, let's take the best and brightest. It wasn't that idea. And, and, and I feel that the men that was sent because we cannot forget that it was men and that, and that a lot of this has got to do with like that male energy and masculinity and pat patriarchy or at least uh, that whole idea of that. Energy. If we then say colonization was the reason that everywhere around where all of our traditions, all of our beliefs, all of the things that indigenous Aboriginal people at whichever part of the world that they were at was the core of the systems that existed within their society. So they were functioning. Even if it is that other people didn't know that you existed in Australia, down under, just because someone hadn't gone on a boat to find out that you down there, down there, having a great time, doesn't mean you didn't exist. So if we're saying that even though those um, evil, bad, bad, uncivilized, uh, backward, um, dark voodoo, you know, it's always negative in the connotation of the persons, the colonizer, whomever they were, because it was a bunch of them, uh, mainly the British. Um, <laughs> and this was like a whole conversation for another day where we talk about English and the rest. But all of these colonizers, they were, they were, they were just out here, just taking, they were bad mouthing everything for the purpose of being able to keep themselves, preserve themselves. I mean, you're in uncharted, well, unless you've been there a couple of times or you've been in the environment that allows you to understand what one when you do go, you're not walking into, regardless of what you could have murdered, you could, you could have done all sorts of really bad things. But as they and it wrong and stop, Manier of my fro. You are not at your beer boss in Becky. At your just like, <laughs> you have to humble because you have no idea what is even here, what potentially could be here that isn't here right now, how the setup work, and even what it means when somebody comes to you and says hello, something that you would consider to be a because you don't understand the customs, you don't understand the language. Language is a very important portion of this conversation as well, but let's now establish that we're talking about colonizers traveling around the world and labeling everything from every, every indigenous and aboriginal 
peoples, from wherever it is that they are in the world, the humans, the human beings, all of us, soul carriers. The idea is, we get here, we don't know what guan, we must play it humble, be safe, be small, but then we can observe. Now we observe your my bro, the asmos <gasps> paradise, kanan. It's no coincidence that same names in the freedom put out in the uh, what is that book called the, the basic instructions before you leave the earth that book's mentioning a lot of places that are here in southern africa so now we are at a place where we're like okay so people were traveling around because the shitty things that they, where they were at and what was happening in their environment and where they came from was not healthy it was not helping things were not good they had no other option but to go and explore the unknown world, which was just places that, that they didn't um, see yet. And when they found people there, they immediately classified them as uncivilized. Their customs, their language, um, their practices, the way that they, as completely the opposite, the dark, the worse, the bad by comparison to their own. And we need to understand that that's like saying somebody that's got a movie says snolly is telling you, yes, like you, you, you need to at least wipe the little bit of the snot off when you sneeze. And that snolly is just like it's making a bubble here. And it doesn't make sense to me. So everybody understands that. Now in Africa, the only thing that we can do is we are living as, yes, we have our problems. Yes, we have our issues. We've got wars. We've got uh, the, the same things that affect the flesh, the th same things that affect the human being, the, the vessel in which we occupy. Those that come from a, a place of, of desolation and destruction, they are still of us because if we all accept that all human beings started life here in Africa, everybody that is a human being, a hue of being, they are here and part of a family unit, connected in some way, shape or form, Stop getting caught up in like the color of your skin and like race is not, there is no, there's one race, the human race. That's the one you belong to. The other things are ethnicities, cultures. They are, they are classifications. They are ways of being to describe things. Like I'm not going to call my tripod that I use for shooting a wedding, um, oh, my tripod. It's gear. You know, if I, if I just have a, there's, there's categories for things. You, you don't call every single pen in your, in your possession office equipment, but when you're in an office and you're looking at, it, at a pen, it's office equipment. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are a human being, a hue of being. You are at the moment an expression of mother and father. The, so, so we're at a place now where all of us are family members. We're all brothers and sisters, cousins, this or whatever, but we have gotten to a point where competition, greed, and all of those types of, have led to a poisonous environment that some of us had to travel around the world thinking that there's no one else because they'd forgotten. Because you can't tell me that every time, you, even in your own family, even though it's like, yeah, but this one is gone and this one is gone. There's old photos. There's somebody from a cousin or a neighbor or a newbie who would say, Ooh, this uh, Sophie, dang a second. Yeah, young too. You're not clean, was it? Also, I can know how Even nobody in your family would remember that story. Nobody that you think would be connected to you. But that is just another piece of evidence that shows that we live forever, not only in our, because we are spirit, having a human experience, but also this avatar that you're in will carry on in the people whose hearts you have left memories painful or positive or whichever they will carry them for as long as they are around so you will be living in their memory in their hearts for as long as they are around and for as long as they continue to share your story for as long as they keep talking about you as long as you are being remembered you will live forever so now we are at a place where they've forgotten we are all family but they come from a poisonous, dirty, disgusting, painful, destroyed place and now have no idea what's going on and everything looks like paradise. And in, in itself, us as those that are in all these aboriginal indigenous areas, we are living in harmony. In some cases, for the most part, we are living in harmony. We do have our problems, but we live in harmony. We're living in harmony with nature. We are living in harmony with each other. We have our God. We have our gods. We have our traditions. We have our customs. We have our languages, which is so fundamentally important because everything changed the moment our languages became foreign. Uh, the moment that our language became gibberish because they were like, 
like, uh-uh, mm-mm, nonsense. I don't know. Because you're, and, 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 and all, all the, none of that. None of that. Because it's, I can't understand because I cannot remember. So it becomes gibberish nonsense. So I have to teach you a new language. So when all those things were removed from what brought those civilizations, those indigenous aboriginal people from all over the world, all the human beings, then we are now saying that whoever is the colonizer, because there's a bunch of them, instilled whatever it was that made them comfortable after they'd learnt what they could from the indigenous peoples in order for them to be able to say, okay, Lester, Krimenil, Malas, all the rest of these sickly people, because we are in that business uh, and, and then you go back so that the other Owens that are actually a bit more scared and that actually have a bit more say and actually have a bit more influence and have a bit more of this and that can help save our people can come back and not just because you said so but because of what you bring with them oh and BT Derbs, we convinced a couple of these uh, indigenous, native, uncivilized, ungodly, unkempt, unclean, so that you can actually take them with you and go and show them off. They won't even suspect a thing if they get any sort of funny ideas. They have no idea where they are headed off to. But take them with you. Now we've left a whole bunch of men integrating with a bunch of other Aboriginal and Indigenous people driven by some whatever it was that they were sent here for. I, trust me, I know they forgot. And immediately, when you understand that overstand, that your language, your customs, your traditions, your, your God, your not religion, your history, your, not your history, your past, everything that makes up who you come from was deemed bad, evil, and had to be transformed and translated and turned into something better because that was already where their competition started. That's when things flew amiss. And the reason why we now are having arguments into Africa, into human beings, into all of us as actual soul carriers, and then rather saying, oh, my closer brother or my closer sister, I know that whatever it is that you were taught, because the secrets that were given to our people over generations, the customs that were continued over generation and generation, despite conflict, despite war, despite, was not the center of any of the information that was being given in order to make everything comfortable for everyone else. Because we are living under colonial interest and colonial rule and colonial best um, idea. And that is con contrary to those ideas so it's not going to happen so when we start unraveling this we can start making sense of okay why is it that if our ancient if our ancestors the people that people say that are oh those are devil that's demon worship hey what i can ancestors and even you amakosa amazulu it doesn't matter any african every soul carry a melanated but every person if if you can relate to the fact that your ancestors every single person before you is responsible and you should be grateful for that you are here regardless of who they are or where they're from if they did not exist you would not have existed either so if we can say that they're telling you that that's evil and that's the devil and that's the rest of this and, and we are now trying to figure out that okay maybe there's some of this truth in these esoteric teachings because it's all of a sudden like crept in and I say all of a sudden I say in the last say 30 years or so it's like really crept into society like the Illumina and the, the secret societies and ooh, symbols and uh, hidden sight and all this. It's like it's very mainstream. It's very um, exposed in some cases. And, uh, but it's also become a social conversation that's happening around the world. And if we are saying that some of the stuff that's in there is based on truth. And if we are also saying that the peoples on the Aboriginal Africa, all the people from all the indigenous places, were the ones whom had this knowledge, had this information, had all of these access to these teachings from generations before that, then it would be easy to accept that if I was a colonizer and I came and I took away all of this stuff after learning everything, I would know that if ancestors, and not if, 
ancestors being real, souls being real, this being a expression, a a a test ground. A f- that means that all the stuff about like oh you know you know reincarnation and all that. If that's then I will have to ensure that by the time that these people, the indigenous and Aboriginal people from all of the, over the world, that I have traumatized, committed genocide against, destroyed every. In every instance, try to extinguish even the common people, the Bushmen. You talk, you, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, you know, Holocaust. That Holocaust never gets talked about in the indigenous people of Southern Africa that were exterminated. Where as a as a means of sport, some of these colonial and this is quite maybe I shouldn't share it. That's a bit too um, graphic. But it's not it's not fair and it's not right. But now, if you underst- overstood as the colonizer the customs, the religion, not the religion, the beliefs, the the traditions and you're like okay ancestors are real you would know that all these atrocities that you are committing at some point in the future those souls will return because those souls will reincarnate and however long it will take but they will be at a point where they'll be like yay i'm gonna remember and things are gonna get set right that's why we're currently looking at all around the world over the last few years the youth specifically have been incredibly aggravated at about Everything, even though they're fighting amongst each other, there's like this sense that, oh, deja vu is quite more prevalent. You know, it's like, oh, I'm like seeing the moon, like that kind of feels like, you know, I actually had a dream about this. And uh, could it be that those souls from all those indigenous places and all those people and why we are having all foreigners that are coming, all these places are being sort of like what do they call overrun by a stream of foreigners from everywhere else and all melanated people, soul carriers. If they're all returning and these most a lot of these youth are not even included in these conversations because they've been led to believe that it's Maneta Loin as a as a as a as a, a wurang blast at you're like, hey man, you don't even know what my struggle is. You weren't there when we were getting shot at during Fields Must Fall, Fees Must Fall. You weren't there when we were talking about the fact that we are being um no, we're not provided any opportunities. You, everybody went to go and study. He's like, yeah, good. You got to go and get a university degree and all But where are the jobs at? You don't understand how the economic system is specifically designed to keep us in minimum wage jobs, in low skill employment, unless we know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody or that is somebody that owns something them outright or that they have a good relationship with them. So it's very difficult to try to, co- to connect the youth with the truth because the people that carry the truth, most of the elders, most of, and especially in our communities, are still licking their wounds from the effect of apartheid, pre-apartheid, colonialism. And that goes for all over the world. So if we are looking at the way things are now, all the souls that had been from those first people, if they have been reincarnated or they have rebirthed or they have come back or they are in some way influencing through their ancestry the guidance as an angel or what do they call it, um, a guiding angel or something like that, then it could help explain why the youth in particular is very, very, very specifically targeted and why drugs, alcohol, uh, terrible self-control, terrible ability to look after your body, no need to associate with where you come from. Bushman is a derogatory term. Uh, not knowing that it actually means that it's like a chesiende uh, or something. There's another term or definition behind it. But like these things lead you down a rabbit hole. Yes. They lead you down a place where you start saying, but it takes you from, oh, this is not just some new rapping for a political movement, some r- new rapping for a bunch of old people to convince us young people to do some shit that we don't want anything to do with in the first place that is not going to affect them, but it's going to leave us being them in the future when they're gone. And then we have to do the same thing to our kids. Instead of it becoming that, it now becomes a search, an internal journey for who am I? And when you start looking at that, you're like, okay, wait a minute. Now it makes sense why every single condition in our communities is always set up for violence, competition, conflict. It is perfectly designed so that when it is that those ancient souls return, or are influencing through the youth, through the movements, through those that are willing to expose the truth, fight for what is right, be kind, be the, be the ones that are able to live the teaching instead of teach the living. And, and 
what would be the most easiest way to compete for that sake if you were the early colonizers and say let's set up the game in a way so that when it is that they do return there's more pushback and more division that further deepens our claws so that those communities will never unite and if those communities don't unite then the other peoples tribes clans whatever you want to call it all the human beings they won't unite and we can continue exercising this imperialistic control the psychological hypnosis that we experience in every single day activity because it's now possible to track us it's not and it's not like a, oh this is like just the thing it's like a conspiracy against if if it is that you are like yeah conspiracy is not your but it's not isolated to a specific race group consider how more how much more powerful it is if you are then tracking and tracing the people who are indigenous descendants if you have the access to the information that reveals the truth of somebody's origins their their confandan whose bloodline they flow from especially considering how easy it is to access everything else that makes you fluid enough to accept whatever narrative they spew at you because you will find more smoker laser more keker and more shops and uh lone people in our communities than anywhere else. Yes, I'm a Tosa, I'm a Zulu, I'm a Nguni, all of us, all of us. You'll find more of that problematic, non-contributing to a positive outcome in our communities than anywhere else. You won't find more schools, you won't find more clinics, you won't find more libraries. It is a disgusting thing to see that in our communities, our parks where our kids are, that's the only place where they, because we in any case living in a freaking shoebox where you can't even build uh, extra room you can't even have a garden it was like yeah you were talking about sustainability and there's a how could you listen you try and build a uh, on the back room and then have a space for you to be able to at least have your children feel like they can connect with the earth without having to walk on glass or dwellings kick broken equipment there's no parks for them and those parks are a sorry excuse of, uh, of what it is that the municipalities and all these political parties and all the rest of them, yes, some of them have some good messages and they make you want to feel good and the rest of them. But let's be serious. If the real concern from political parties and from, and again, I know how this is going to make you feel, political parties, uh, non-profit organizations, a whole bunch of these supposedly social and human interest people, why is it that the main concerns aren't being taken care of? Health? Why is it that we don't have medication that can take care of the thing that is common, like so common? It's like, oh, no, 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 people are so, they're struggling with so much uh, diabetes. And okay, why the hell are you keep putting in more sugar-free options that say sugar-free, but it then has sugar alternatives? Why is it that you are now rather pushing importing of other products instead of saying, hey, let's go and do what some of our communities are out there doing and let's do a community garden, but not for the sakes of just taking photos so they can put it in the August, but then now helps us then use this competition system so you can rather say hoe groot is jylle tomaties in die straat in vergelike met die mense se tomaties in die straat why can't it be a positive contribution there why does it always have to be t-shirts and hampers why does it always have to be an outing sub somewhere why can't it be i know that for the how many years all of the parks in and i'm going to just speak about my town marmersbury our parks are horrible all of it. even the ones in our in our uh, across the street where the where the where the other side of the road people live even those parks suck how can you have thorns at a park where there's kids who's maintaining it no we don't have budget for this we don't have money for that we did it then the concern is not the people it is profit the concern is not the people the planet it is profit the concern is not your plight it is profit the concern is not your political party it is profit and the moment that we understand that it is profit that these people are after, and, and by these people, it is all of those that are in power that are allowing us to fight each other, to continue this debate about like, you're not black enough. Oh, you're not colored enough. Oh, you know what color it is. You don't know what Indian is. Oh, you know what white is. And why is there someone? Oh, nobody's talking about white genocide. And oh, but nobody's talking about Indian. That whole principle is to distract you from the truth that you are a human being, a living free man and woman, not bound by these corporate laws, not bound by the restrictions of the way that society is set up, and that you are a descendant. Stop getting caught in this argument of like, yeah, but I'm a, I'm a Koi and I'm a Zulu and I'm a Nguni and you think that you don't know because they're a bunch of the... Don't get caught in that. A descendant. A desc Do you treat your brother's children's children different because they're your brother's children's children do you treat your neighbor who you love so much that you know married your cousin 
their children's children. To, I'm not talking about discipline, and I'm not talking about like, yeah, yeah, my like this as I'm talking about like, you're not going to be like, oh, no, no, not human. That's not a, uh, oh, no. That's exactly what they want you to do. Because the minute that we all, as human beings, can unite and say, hey, we are living human blood flows through these veins, person in purpone, then you immediately mark for hulle krachteloos. And what that means is the freedom everybody talks about in those, uh, you know, that the Reserve Bank owns everybody and that you're a debt thing and your birth certificate is an ownership receipt and all of that cut goes out of the window. They can't do shit. They, sorry, man. They cannot do anything because now you are a real living being you're not bound by maritime law you're not bound by these stupid covenants that they have with all sorts of funny different and it's not even about like yeah yeah he goes off the rails this is conspiracy think about every interaction that you've had and how much of the interactions that you've had have led you to a place that improved your understanding overstanding understanding of yourself the truth the environment think of how many times those things made you question things about yourself and when you marinated meditated worked through it processed it you felt better you felt more informed you were more inquisitive and you were actually looking to search for more information the systematic approaches that everybody keeps talking about, the Rastaman, give thanks and praise to our creator for giving us the Rastafarian community, the or, or the the those those kept customs, those individuals, men and women, kept customs alive of our ancestors, our Aboriginal indigenous descendants. And yes, in certain ways, some things might have changed, but it is a flicker that we can all fan into a flame the moment we all come and sit together around the fire united and we embrace each other and we listen and we learn and we move and we move to a place of trying to be a better human being instead of trying to be a better Kosa. Of course, I'm not net my privilege. No, I'm sorry, my, my, my Model C school Tourette's just kicked in. <laughs> a Kosa. If you're a Kosa, um, if you're a Kosa, if you're a Zulu, if you're a Koi, if you're a Kam, uh, uh, if you are, it doesn't matter. You're a human first. You're a soul carrier. And what's so much more important is instead of fighting each other is to overstand the systematic approach of keeping us divided through drugs, through mind control in education, TV programming, uh, technology tracking. All of that stuff is true. You can read up all these cyber conversations. They leave it to you in plain sight like what you always hear. But they write it in words that will make you feel like, uh, nee, nee, ek worry nie, dit raak nie vir my nie, ek het niks daarmee te doen nie, it's cool, I don't want to, specifically so that you don't read it, and you don't actually process it, you don't understand it, so that when it does come to light, they'll be like, yeah, but we said so, and you know, and that's the same way that God works. What did he say? Yeah, there's your servant, look at there, look at that servant over there, swak, jong, sê dan gesteek, kom ek gaan wees vir jou. You can do anything you want, just don't kill them. And right now, what is happening around the world, all this violence, all the violence in our own communities has been perpetrated by our own people, on our own people, by other corporations, by other peoples, by other nations, by other, it's all being led around that same principle to challenge that idea that you as a soul carrier that has the essence of source, the essence of God, not God the word, not God some being, not God the, God is in everything, everything. That is what's being threatened. And I feel that at the moment, why we are at this powder keg point and why a lot of people are questioning things that you've held on to for so long is because the only way you will uncover and discover this is if you understand it. And once you understand it, you are trying to overstand things. So you will connect, reach out, ask questions, be inquisitive, be open, be willing to be kind, be willing to dump your cup and empty it and be like, all right, let's go for this ride. <laughs> all right. What was that? DMT. Oh, really? What is that? <laughs> okay, we'll get that for another day. But I want to give it to you uh, and I'd like to connect with you. I know it might have been a lot. If you didn't catch up on all of it, I'm going to replay this in uh, the YouTube thingy. But it was just a, I felt very connected today and i don't know if it has anything to do with the eclipse that's coming but i felt like i needed to be more vulnerable M more like okay uh, uh, this week has been crazy we've had so much things so many things happen 
and so many things that have been revealed, so many things that have been like really difficult to digest. And I don't want us to lose sight of that. But in that same sense, I feel like I have a duty to you because I'm not just um, a doorway. Yes, I am a doorway, but you know, the door is made out of something. So, and I feel like it's important for you to understand that so that you can discern and choose for yourself. Do I, can I, will I, do I want to trust? Can I follow, fellow, connect, find value, add value, share, enlighten, inspire, share? How do we grow to a point where we can be better human beings for a better future for us all? That is, that is like, whew, the ultimate goal. And I think that that's only possible if you really know who I am. So I'm trying to be a bit more vulnerable and share with you. And today what I shared with you was just something that made me, that I've been sort of like mulling over, that the systemic racism, yes, it exists, that there are programs and, and uh, systems designed to oppress those that are not, uh, those that are melanated. There are, uh, aber there are specific intentions to keep people marginalized. There are, there is issues, social issues and problems that we experience. But a lot of the cancer that exists in our society is born from things that we know we can solve. But that don't get the attention other than fundraisers or hampers or something that does good for an image or a, a ego or an idol. And, and in its essence, if we believe in the ancient civilizations, and that I know is a conversation that I can't wait to have when we're talking about the Sumerians and the, oh, that's going to be fantastic, and the Atlanteans. And if, if we can consider, even if you aren't part of that conversation yet, but if you can consider that that could be and is true, then it shouldn't be so difficult to believe that if souls come back and if people reincarnate or if human beings, avatars, are, are swapped out. It means that over the period of time, because time is relevant, but Father Time, Kronos, oh, oh, man, I've been watching this other dude so much. And anyway, so, so um, if, we, if we consider that time is not really relevant to those that have moved beyond this realm, then it means that if it is that they could choose to come back or influence as an ancestor, they would. And right now, at the moment, our youth is at the moment the best indicator because everywhere around the world, it's the youth that is responsible for the fact that there's change coming. But they're getting the least amount of support. They're getting the least amount of attention. They're getting the least amount of information. I've checked through even my analytics and stuff. Like the people that I'm reaching, it's not the youth. It's mostly uh, my gener like 30 uh, say th 35 plus now nah, oh, that's who, who so again why would you wh why why would if if we know that the information that we've been discussing this week not what i just shared with you guys about like my opinion of like the fact that we our systemic uh, oppression is still part of the idea of oppressing the souls that are coming back to actually make what's right the ancients that have returned the ones that are actually setting us free the ones that are speaking they're like yo i get to get my out of the guy energy for my man to carry off out of the guy energy for my sister to fool and and no fool it like yo there's like like time and i'm gonna rise now and those are returning so i feel like other than that i just feel like we we really are hitting a critical point where youth is being oppressed youth is being targeted because they know that that is where the enemy is coming from enemy of the system and who was there Everybody that could be there, that's supposed to be there, is licking their wounds from the, the trauma and the, and the pains from empty promises and lies and are rather fighting each other over titles and pageantry, and that's not what it's about. So let me quickly go to the comments. Uh, um, I'm going to have a look and see if anybody even wanted to hear half of that. It's, I mean, who, who really wants to? But I, I feel like it was, i watch it. I learn it back. I, I, I get messages too, and then I can process things so oh let us go see hello to amal that i don't know i know a bit not a lot of people are back then but it's good to have you here everybody here who uses uh comments too i'm not going to take more of your time it's friday a little bit lacquer live day in kindness eight often i'm over the s live like lovely no comments yet oh there we go hello everybody simone gavender lovely to have you simone capitalism truth not only consumers, but good submissive workers. And that's part of that whole industrial revolution process. I mean, even if you look at the way our communities are set up, it looks like a freaking concentration camp. It looks like it was designed to be a manufacturing belt. It's like, okay, they got here so blij, they got there so crazy, they got here so school, they got here no, but luckily is alles nabe genoeg and all the public transport, so that you still can work. You can come to all the places where you only live from, but you don't have to work, but you have to um, so yeah, and that's for all human beings because you're a soul carrier, you're a threat. Uh, let's see who else is here. Fantastic, thank you so everybody that's sharing. It in as alles wat hy bede is. Ek deel maar net maar, ek moet ook een bykie myself. 
uh, uh, nie, ek, uh, onbloot, vulnerable wees, en net, so dat as jy vir my in die publiek kry, of as jy vir my miskien een dag op die plaas kry, vir een van ons events, of as jy gaan sien, jy, die man het dan nou muziek, of die man is bezig met ander medicine, like psychedelics, en met uh, ganja, en met silent therapies, en eco, to, wat, wat gaat, then you're not going to be like, so, oh, but this guy is like supposed to be like a, 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 an information guy that just tells us about, no, 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 uh, we are all multifaceted. We have so many more beautiful offerings of who we are. And today I really felt the strong uh, conviction to share myself more vulnerably with everybody. So whoop, Simone is alright. I get it. It's all good. I've worked with indigenous Namakoi people and they couldn't care less about the government. I know. <laughs> Look at anybody in Northern Cape. How, how often do you hear about the Northern Cape um, and the indigenous plants, let alone the people? And what is actually happening in our resource-rich province? And by resource-rich, in their eyes, it's all the people that's there because they are being blinded and confused and lied to. And they're being robbed of their land and resources and living humbly. Exactly. How often do you hear about that in the news? How often do you see people? How many, how many people do you think would, would be like, okay, I'm going to be part of a two-hour conversation online, live, and I'm going to actually sit and have a comprehension of what's being said here if we were going to be discussing what is happening in the, unless it's sensation, unless it has something that tantalizes or tantalizes or casts the spell or, you know, it's not going to be heard. So those that do hear and those that are present and those that do have that conversation, it's not that you're special. It just means that that is your turn. That is, that is your pre-decided opportunity to then make your choice, to exercise your choice as a living human free spirit to say, I am either going to, uh, uh, uh. education fixes everything. Afternoon, everyone calm and education is important, but like we learned yesterday when I was referencing what FW, uh, no, FW what was uh, HF Pervut was saying, the master of uh, the education is like, you have, if you have control of the education system, you've got control of the people. So education is an important component, but we also need to c couple it with, with intention. Like we have to understand like what was being said by Queen Valerie in her interview. She's like, who benefits? Let's, let's get behind the, uh, how, why it is that whenever it is that we have to talk about money or, uh, or, or who's, a, then immediately the conversation has to be shut down and immediately has to be, yeah, it's just a geld gaat, oh, it gaat maar net because you are thinking about profits, or je wil maar net for yourself benefit and benefit. But, but every corporation, even the government is after trying to make sure that everything turns out profitable. And the moment that we start having that conversation around, okay, but now who's going to benefit? Not as a, I want to be a recipient of this, but who is going to benefit? The reason why it makes you uncomfortable is because then it starts revealing who actually has the control. Because if you follow the money, you'll find out who it is. So, yeah. I, Etienne, Koi are my absolute favorite people. How can I help? Olive Cherry Blossom. Olive Cherry Blossom, Kai Gang Gangs, for your message, your... your um, contribution as well i mean i think uh what is also important and part of what i was saying at the beginning of this conversation is that um it's important for us to do a lot of inner standing so if you if uh, and, and it's wonderful and i don't, don't want to um isolate you or do anything but i just want to use this as an opportunity to say if you're saying that koi are my absolute favorite people how can i help one of the Things I've noted in my experience, especially working with communities across the country and working with uh, both indigenous leadership, and government, and all these other parties, <coughs> excuse me, is a lot of the time when our people are being told, yeah, I want to come and help, and they then say, what we need is help. All of a sudden it becomes, a, well, oh, oh, but that's not really what I meant. Um, can I help you in a different way? So... And this is not just for you. This is for anybody trying to help anybody else. It is good to come in that spirit of kindness and generosity. But consider you know yourself. You know what is at your disposal. You know what you are capable of. You are completely aware of your network. You know what your influence is. You know what your, your capability of changing and making an impact is. Maybe looking at the fact that you were not oortuig man, what is the word for oortuig now? You were, you were not convinced, but what gave you that sense of I need to help? 
analyzing those things and comparing it to everything in your own life, your own possession, your own network, or whatever, and then seeing where is the path of least resistance but most impact that preserves human dignity. That's, that's, that's as simple as it is. Because in my own experience, even when people are like, yo, Etienne, how can I help you? I'm like, yes, like if you... Um, and then it's just like, nah, 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 uh, uh, I can't, uh, no, please, it's in, please, no, can I rather? So really, I think that that's something that also comes back to what I was talking about before. It has to do with uh, inner standing, analyzing yourself, asking yourself why, who's going to benefit. If, I'm, if, you, if, if, if I say, okay, Olivia, I would like to have help with um, additional legal and and um, advisory in terms of what is happening with these f- laws and some of the people that have already gone through the system because so many of our people are trapped within the system itself that cannot be set free because they are still being held by the dying remnants of this old oligarchical society and, and system and, of control that exists. How we could connect in that way if you're like i've got a bunch of people that can do pro bono work or that could come on to your show and be like etienne every week we are going to give free live legal advice we are going to address the issues of the stuff like how do people c- uh, approach the municipality how do the people handle when jmpd is being a, 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 a bunch of wankers and they want to employ people because of their race and they are all the same race but now they're basing them on a classification that was built and designed in apartheid i think i've made my point clear but i a- appreciate love your willingness and at the same time um it is so wonderful to see that that is also the result outside of all the other turmoil that we see that really more and more people much more people are looking to positively contribute and the way we can do that is to help each other in knowledge in whatever way we feel we can but then knowing exactly what it is that our help that we are offering is so that you can be like, all right, I'll drive you up and down wherever you want to go in the country so you can interview all of the people and I'll make sure that your family is still taken care of because they are at home independent. Cool. I'll be like, all right, let me just check my diary. Anyway, I appreciate love you. Uh, I just got the number one glitter bag. Sweet. Who's that? I still don't know what that means. Uh, well, I don't know what any of the... And, and you know, I, I don't really... Yeah, I don't know. Candace, hi, Etienne, what are we talking about? Uh, today, we do whatever you want to talk about, Candace. Etienne, you're speaking at us right now. Speak to us. Thank you for that, Candace. I appreciate love that. Helping me also get onto the right path. And also, just so that we can add a little context, I'm sure, 17 other comments, I'm sure I probably explained it, but I'm, I'm really just, this is like, Etienne, what is that? Unplugged. He's just explaining, downloading, he's opening minds to think for themselves and take accountability to the ones. Now, there we go. That's what what, what Pereira clan said. Thank you. I think this guy just needs to vent. <laughs> Let it out. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate love you. That's so true. Everyone feels and thinks this, but says nothing and does nothing. That's a very interesting perspective. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Pereira clan. Is he doing something? Why do we have to comment negative instead of asking what we, or what can I do? The first objective should be to realize we need to teach ourselves different from what we know. Respect chief, we should all vote between NCC and PA, give our people a chance. Look, I'm not telling you who to vote for, what to follow. All I'm offering you is perspective, the truth, and my Inter- or uh, um, not interpretation, my overstanding of it and how I can package it the way that I was made. I'm made this way. I can't, it's not like this is like one of those, oh, it's like a persona kind of thing. And anybody that's ever met me in real life, you were like, no, nah, this is, seems still calm. Um, so, so, so I get that. I, I, I understand. But you are free to make a decision. That's, that's the point of this. That's the point of this. You are allowed to decide for yourself. You're free. Nobody needs to give you permission to... Move from a point of respect and kindness and, and your world will impact and change so much. Uh, boom, the truth must be told. I shall set us free. Truth. Chris Kapani, lovely. My brother's children share my DNA. Simone Governor, that's beautiful. We all share more than just our DNA. We, we share this planet. We, we share the air. We share the similarity of the fact that nobody really has to think about breathing. It just happens until you think about it. Then you 
think you can control it and then for some period of time all of a sudden you don't even even consider it anymore and you just breathe on your own part of amazing thing of being this hum human we should vote for a party that are people by the people true peace people tell me lovely peace of the people <laughs> good afternoon i'm 33 and white but believe this country belongs to the koi people and sand people oh olive cherry that is such a bold and courageous statement to make because i know that that is an immediate target one because you're a woman first and foremost two because you're white and three because of the fact that you at, at a time where there's so much division anything you say is going to be seen and misconstrued as uh like either confirmation bias or just like oh you know that's that guilt complex that privilege is looking out for itself and anybody else that even even myself i mean i've been called really ugly things and i don't care they can call me whatever i am i am i am and and when i for example say yeah i agree with you or i appreciate love you and it will always be construed into this narrative of yeah okay, you see this is what this whole colored thing isn't actually black people they are made from us is because they will always serve their masters and they because of the distortion of history because of the dis disconnection between your history and past and the disconnection between the truth and the fact that the languages even that we speak and a lot of people point out it's like, yeah you people are claiming koi but you can't even speak any of the koi languages in the map but the people that do you knock and you start like but so it's a very tumultuous time and it's very critical for us in in this in this time right now in our country on the globe to do exactly what everybody else that's still connected that's part of this journey that's part of this conversation on this platform because this is only one of many different channels that you can have that that believe the same thing that we can move forward unify in kindness and with respect and we can share i mean the principles if anybody has listened to any of the interviews if you've listened to any of the like, the people that i've spoken to any of the at the core of it all it's not about taking land and this is ours and getting that is what is being heard and amplified the most but then it's the same like with every other instance of media control it's so that the narrative can fit whatever the agenda is the part that gets cut off is is that so that we can share that's that's the part that gets cut off so thank you for your bravery true master flame true if they divide the youth they conquer easier exactly that is the that that is exactly what they did and and a lot of the time there's this internal house conflict because the way our youth is being informed on how to relate to every is being influenced by everything and every one else except from their own people because their own people whomever their own might consist of either are being oppressed suppressed shadow banned not being allowed to share or hasn't committed to the same formula that exists within the media profile so that it can be viral and the rest so that people can feel compelled to get that piece of personal gratification you know that yeah i'm with the rest when i like or when i comment i will rather not say anything i'll rather not share it even if it is the truth i'll rather i'll just watch it consume it and keep it for myself so this even more so causes our youth to stand divided and jump onto things that might not even be a save to any of us but rather to our all our detriment and that's why i feel like a lot of the time when we talk about the youth again like what was said by um let me quickly go back i just want to make sure that i say simone said it's like don't we don't we're talking at the youth how many people have been asked how many people how many of these other than when there's actually like really poor poor hitting the fan and they say okay let's find out from the people between the ages of 18 let's say 13 13 and 25 wagwan what's up what's what's going on here and then we'll because uh, we know at least in that area you can start at least formulating an opinion and i mean if we are trying to create a society where people can be free and speak free and express themselves and differ and not have to fight and have to but can differ and disagree without it having to be something personal how are we going to do that if we don't even show that we live the teaching and say let's have that and by that i mean it's like showing interest when was the last time that any of us even wanted to participate with the youth now okay it's different for a lot of people that are participating in as a community leader in the rest but like out of your own just be like you know what i feel like doing today if it's a musical light is with you be hooked on i'll uh whatever i'm not gonna go and preach to them i'm gonna go to them and say yeah how many of you always have ever been to the beach is it like a day today do you want to go no no man but as it catches like no no catch do you want to go yes or no
Go chat to your parents if you want to, if you have them, if they have, that's a very painful thing, if they even have them. And let's align. Let's, again, coming back to what we were talking about, moving from a place of kindness and respect and doing something that positively impacts the world is so much more of an ob- a objectively correct, moral, right thing to do, but we don't see it in our society. We don't see it from our politicians. We don't see it from our NPOs. Not all of them. And not all of them are not doing this because it's like, yo, but Etienne, how can we do this? You know, we're only like four people and we're trying to feed 5,000 people. And we're like, yeah, I know. I know. And I sit in these offices with like municipality and people that are, have the ability to do this and change. And it's always stuck in the language because we're at war. Anyway, yeah, it's a bit too much. I think maybe that's also going to like lose a couple of people. <laughs> that was the best delivery ever. Thank you. More people need to hard and learn. Oh, man. Give thanks. Respect. Uh, Master Flame True. These conversations are healing and a renewal thought process. Once you control the news, you control everything, basically. That is so true. You will never hear about that in the news because the ANC hides everything not related to black people. Greetings, everyone. Blessings to one and all uh, who have embraced their First Nation roots. Beautiful. I'll say the Slade. Wow, I hear you. I guess it's easier said than done. I'd love to help where I can. Connect. We'll reach out. Uh, I mean, oh, perfect. Lovely. I look forward to getting your message. And I'm hoping that at least if anybody that is watching this, that is hearing this, I don't know where um, you're from, Olive Cherry. I don't know what your intention of helping is or whichever, but I also don't know who is hearing this message now, later, whenever. Whoever you are, however you can, if there is something that you need help with. I feel like this is where that Humanities Africa approach from that uh, peer-to-peer really doing the thing where we're like, you know, the neighbors helping each other, like our communities are like, he's saken in Nikofat. That kind of thing can happen in all instances. I don't have medical aid. I've just found out that this is the... Oh, I've got it. I'll sort it out. Oh, I, I need to... Don't just think in terms of the Rand value. Think of the value. So so if you need something, if you are in look like even the Clakey Skrull community, maybe I can connect. Let's talk to each other. Let's connect. Let's not, let's not be ashamed by the fact that it's like, okay, listen, I've been driving with a petrol light on for like so many years now. And every time that there's anything that comes in, it literally goes out because there's no way to actually build a foundation. Then don't feel bad. Don't let the fact that somebody is going to be like, yeah, but you lazy. There's nothing wrong with you and you could have done this and you could. Don't let those things influence it. At the end of the day, the choice you make for yourself impacts you alone and changes nothing, whatever their opinion is. I'm just saying, you got to be. It's not selfish. It's not self-righteous to be concerned and to love yourself. If you know how to love yourself, then you'll be able to understand when somebody is actually showing you love. Uh, that is a target. Abu Bray, brainwashed. Same thing. No one really understands English and where it comes from, what its purpose is. Why is it called spelling? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, let's just, yeah, yeah. Slay chief. Slay chief. Chief, chief. Ahoy. Hi, Huas, my brother. The narrative contro- controls the youth within the system in terms of what they consume in the media. Keep them distracted. Keep them dumb, dumb. Keep, make sure that they don't see. Keep them sleeping in the land of not. It's this incredible hypnosis that happens that is almost like a lucid dream. That's why people will defend it and attack you for pointing out the truth. We need to teach the kids to, to be together, to not look at color, but rather at hearts. I still believe media around the world teach the kids to stand together. That's right. we got to think about the kids. That's who they're thinking about. Let's consider that. All of these long-term plans, 10-year plans, 50-year plans, 30, who, who are they really? They're not considering you. 20 year old, 30 year old, 40. They don't, you are on pension. This was like you'll earn nothing and you will be fine. They are concerned with the children. Because they understand that that is where the future is. The youth is the future. That is where life is. And, and, and the moment that you have the ability to create the indoctrinator yourself for those youth, it becomes easier to allow those youth to be indoctrinated in other ways without anybody seeing it. When was the last time you watched any of the shows your kids watch? I said, well, I get, I get flack for that all the time. I was like, yeah, look at you. You're an old man and you still, not old man, but like you're a grown man and you still watch kiddie shows and stuff. I'm like, of course I'm going to watch it. I want to hear what those animated characters are saying i want to understand i'm not just looking for like oh, oh, 
Look there, sign Ooh, Illuminati. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's so ooh. Yo, you know that looking off the I am listening and hearing. It's called programming, people. TV program for a reason. So that I understand in the times that I'm not there to provide the guidance, parental guidance to my child, and she's consuming content, whether it's in my house, at a friend's house, at school, because unfortunately that's also what the teachers ever got and I have to do that. Are letting the children watch freaking TV. Oh my goodness. I want to be sure that I can instill the fundamental principles, the truths, the values that will help guide my seed and that will help her make a decision as a free woman, as a real human being, so that she can explore and experience life in a way that is true to her path and know, have knowledge, be within, know where home is. <laughs> oh, I must stop watching this. Uh, that's a sad thing today. Exactly, Etienne, on the socials, the moment we speak about our roots, the shadow serve us with guidelines. Bro, not just guidelines. You, you should see, I don't know if that was an accident. I think I might have accidentally sent an invitation either way. But uh, you shouldn't just see like immediately after yesterday's interview with a Kleikis Kral um, representative who really beautiful. I know it's a long unedited, but that's how I prefer. I prefer to give it to you straight up, not edit, none of that. That conversation in itself was so, 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 so powerful and so, so, so informative and so, so, so valuable immediately immediately all this attention all this flooding of like people i've never even heard of or never could have connected with or would have probably have, uh, have met because our destinies were meant to go this pathway none of my content has been seen there and and this is not like one of those like oh my goodness my views have dropped oh i must be like so shadow banned and oh my goodness you know it's, this is what happens when the government is like no bro <laughs> there's nothing to do with that I know that the algorithm is you. I know that the algorithm and the way that it's set up is based on the fact that there are emotional triggers, psychological triggers, colors and things and things that have been part of the program and the programming for such a long time that it is easy to convince others of a lie and to move them away from the truth and make them see it as potentially distracting it while the distraction keeps them going. So, so it's, it's really sad to see that in the social movement, but don't stop. Keep going, keep posting, keep sharing, keep creating. If, if at the end of the thing, I didn't even see it there, but I saw at the end of the thing, I'm like, oh, no, nah, no, they're going to come for me now. And I hope that my people will look out for me and protect me and my family, carrying them in the spirit, just like my father and my creator and everyone does. But I'm like, I, I didn't even comprehend what I was saying until I watched it, because I always watch this stuff back because I'm learning with you. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, that 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 is... Probably why I should probably create another account. But I'm like, why should I? I don't need to. I don't need to. The few that have heard, the few that have the message, the few that have seen that it, courage is not doing it because you're not afraid. Courage is doing it even though you are afraid. Being kind despite yourself is where you can get to the place of respect and action based on the fact that you believe it. Not, not believe it because you know it to be true. It's knowledge, knowledge. <laughs> On the socials, all right, let's, uh, I'm done now. Can I please join the chat? Rise Cape Town. Yeah, oh, Rise Cape Town, I just saw you. I'll see if you're still here. I grew up with the TV as my guardian, and because I'm overthinking, I saw through the programming. Nice storm. I, I have the same thing. You probably also on the spectrum there. Eh? I question everything, and I'm not easily convinced. Okay, let's just quickly see. That's the truth. You, you need to question everything, even what I'm telling you. Everything that I'm, Rise Cape Town, I don't know how to send an invoca inv invocation. I have an invitation. If you want to maybe do it uh, or send it, then let's dial her. Let's do the conversation. Um, I also grew up on the TV and the radio, just by the way. That's the reason why I can do very many different accents. I am very fluent in the Russian because of my heritage and where actually that is got ties to the Tartarians and the rest. But um, there is a lot of uh, people that I have uh, followed and understood and uh, I've copied their accents because I listened to a lot of radio and uh, watched a lot of television. And, uh, and even if it was that nobody was able to come to my house and teach me what we were trying to instill as a principle i'd finally listen here and reinterpret just because the programming works in such a way that we understand the sequence and the patterns of things and then it just comes out then i told her people that it's not only about the accent because the accent is just a way to package it's still a chocolate inside even though it's a tech text or it's a power one 
is still a chocolate. But if you are too caught up with what is happening on the packet, you won't even understand that it, inside the chocolate is delicious. And that's exactly why um, I find it difficult to, to connect with someone who purely bases the fact that I sound different to what it is that I'm saying, uh, that they automatically label me as someone that isn't what I say. And I don't subscribe to the fact that someone, whomever they might believe, can tell me who I am. Because go blimey, I'll tell you the very Queen's truth. I'll tell you God's honest truth. The truth of the matter is that I am. And because I am, therefore, I have no need for any label or categorization or any type of silly name that you might consider to even instill me. Because there's nothing that you can do that will stop me from being exactly who I am. My creator has made me in the way that I am. And just because that is different from what you cannot understand, you cannot be fighting me for it. Do some introspection. Find out exactly why it is that you are aiming that way. There is really, you, you, are, too, you are too triggered, man. You, you see, the, the triggering happenings because you have to look in with yourself and find out, no, come on, look, no, so on. And, and, and that is why exactly where we are uh, at this point in juncture in, in time and at a place, a common place, that uh, uh, emotion is, is not who you are. You are going to feel something. The moment you are seeing this, you are hearing it, hey, when, whoo, you are going to say, I want to say, I'm a racist, I'm a kaladi. But you are not going to listen. And now I'm here. And all I can do is share what I know, what I can, and connect with someone that wants to help me be a better human so that we can be better human beings together. I can the invitation to Um Funny, Anna over to say they will. A conversation here, uh, oh, look at that. What did I know? Um, oh, my goodness, thank you. I know King of Access. Oh, man, I can't do it if you hear my Afrikaans, Chinese, man. There is no one who has ever seen her, but the Chinese accent is African. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. But there is no one who has ever seen the Chinese accent. But there is no one who has ever seen the Chinese accent. <laughs> <coughs> Throat chakra. Anyway, I love y'all. You are amazing. Thank you for being part of this little expose, I guess. Just a window into who this guy is that we are having this conversation with. I'm trusting and I know it to be true that we are growing closer to each other so that we can really step into freedom in a way that all people, all humans, all soul carriers don't just hear it but experience it i'm grateful for your attention i'm grateful for your time and i'm grateful to our creator for the gift of life love and peace that we experience in this life and all the lives to come please have a look at the youtube link there's some old videos uh not the old videos the replays the live conversation got to do yourself a favor listen to that conversation with karen from the clakey's crawl community it it literally it, it's like discovering the blueprint and it was like just laying there. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Be kind, be safe, love to you and everybody that loves you back. Most importantly, be kind despite yourself. Uh, let's quickly say goodbye in the comments. Is he Chinese Afrikaans? Yeah, China cards. <laughs> Thank you for your thoughtful insight. It moves us in a good and bad ways, balance, beautiful, slayed, give tongues, blessings, and highly favorable. Not always a bad thing. True. Peace be with you. It was a pleasure spending this time with you. Ma, many blessings. Much love. I'll catch you in the next one. Give thanks.